So welcome everyone. You know, this is the It's in the Bible uh, study series. We are, um, Pasadena's hosting this. Thank you, Denise, for uh, facilitating this and for making it available for us. There are several speakers and I just happen to be one of them. My name is Ariel Glaze, originally born and raised in Panama, moved to the U.S. back in 2001. And I've been in several different churches and several different places. And I'm just happy to be in Pasadena now. Uh, with my new family here. Amen. Um, study for tonight Amen. is entitled, the study for tonight is, is entitled, Did God Create the Devil? So much for your word and for your mercies, for your kindness toward us, for keeping us in the middle of a global pandemic for keeping us in the middle of uh, social political chaos. Lord, we thank you for your Sabbath day, for the moment of peace that you grant us to come and spend some time with you. I thank you for all these friends that are, that are here gathered together to open the Bible with me. And we just pray that your Holy Spirit will come and teach us that we may learn, even if we already know these things, that we may learn and cement it in our mind what we need in order to be ready to have a relationship with you and meet you in the clouds of glory when you come. All these mercies we ask for in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So just very briefly, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to ask if it is possible for you, you go ahead and mute yourself until you're going to speak. Uh, you can raise your hand if you have a question, uh, or you can type it in the chat box, and we'll get to it if, if we can. Denise, feel free to interrupt in, if I missed hand or someone's at something so we can uh, go ahead and answer that um, but other than that I'll just go ahead and dive straight into the topic I'm going to see if I can share my screen and I hope that it all works out okay. all right give me just one moment here and... cool I just want to say um, hello to all. My name is Ranisha. This is my first time joining. And all right. I'm Welcome, Ranisha. Welcome, Ranisha. Good, Welcome good to see you. Good to yeah. see you, sweetie. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Bye. Oh. Are we introducing new people? Or is that what you said? I, I'm sorry. I missed it. Is no, no, invited? no. I... I Mm -hmm. If you'd like to, uh, Sister Bass, that, that'll be fine. Oh, this is my first time. I couldn't make it last week, <laughs> too. I'm from the Hanford House of Hope in um, Hanford, California. Amen. Careful. Good to see you. Amen. Welcome. All right, here we go. So uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yep. All right, good. Let's go ahead and get started then. So, you know, did God create the devil? Why is this such a big question? Right now, nowadays, there's, there's so much philosophy. There's so much around uh, on the origin of evil, you know, whether or not the devil exists. Um, there are some misconceptions that we all have about what the Bible teaches about the devil. Where is he? Where is he from? what started the chaos that we live in this world and what we want in this study is to show from scripture what the origin of evil is and whether or not god is responsible for it and what's our place in this big controversy and you know you know to go ahead and get started with this with whom does sin originate is the question that we are presented with Um, Bibles, if you have them with you, or you can. Ariel, you're freezing. Am I frozen? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, you. Yeah, we didn't hear you Hold. for for a bit. Hold on.
Hold on. No, it's okay. All right, can't. I hope you can see my screen now. So sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes, can we okay, see? Okay, sorry about that. So why is the question of the origin of evil so important? Because right now there's a big lie, and the lie is that the devil does not exist, that or that he's just some concept of mind. But the truth is that. We want to know what the Bible says so that we can see what is God's opinion on the matter so that we can not be deceived in the last days. So 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says, The devil has sinned from the beginning, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, right? Revelation 12, 9. So with whom did sin originate is a question. And the answer is, the devil is the one who sinned from the beginning. Just like the Bible says, in the beginning God created, this is telling us that the devil is the one who sinned from the beginning. So question number two, what was Satan, I'm sorry, what was Satan's name before, before he sinned? Where was he living? Let's go ahead and see what the Bible has to say on that. Sorry, give me one second. I'm struggling here with my screen. I usually like to have all these things prepared. So what was Satan's name before he sinned and where was he living? And I'm going to ask David, can you read that for me if you're able? Sure. Do uh, you want me to read all three of them? Yeah, all three of them. Okay, so Isaiah 14, 12 says, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Uh, Luke 10, 18 says, Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And I, Ezekiel 28, 14 says, You are on the holy mountain of God. You were on the holy mountain of God, sorry. Yeah, so what, you know, what does the Bible tell us um, Satan's original name was? Anybody? Lucifer. Lucifer, right? And what does Lucifer mean? Light barrier. It means light bearer, right? So, you know, from, from what we can see here, Lucifer was not always um, an evil person, right? At least the Bible tells us that you know, his original name was light bearer or someone who brings light, not darkness. Um, mm -hmm. But something happened and, you know, he was in heaven. And during that time, something happened in his heart that caused them to change. And in the words of Jesus here, I saw Satan fall like a lightning from heaven. And ever since he came to earth, he's been at war with us, right? Um, and Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14 says that he was in the holy mountain of God. So in other words, he used to be in heaven. And that's where he was originally. And Lucifer was his original name. All right. Moving forward here. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Lucifer. Um, what is his origin? And how does the Bible describe him? David, can you read One. those for me? Somebody else want to read it? Yeah, anyway. I'll read it. All right. Thank you. Ezekiel 28, 15. You were created. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect and beauty. 
every precious stone was your covering. The workmanship of your trip, uh, timbers and pipes were prepared for you on the day you were created. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in you. Ezekiel 28, 12, 13, and 15. Mm. All right. And then there's one more. You were the anointed cherub who covers. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. Ezekiel 28, 14. So there are a couple of things that we find here. Number one, Lucifer is created, right? So he wasn't always there. He's a created being just like we are created beings, right? And it says there, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and beauty. And, you know, what's the definition of wisdom? Wisdom is knowing how, wisdom is not just being intelligent is knowing how to use that intelligent in a positive way right wisdom is intelligence applied in a positive way in a way that benefits everyone um, so the bible says that he was full of wisdom perfect in beauty right so he was not some creature that that looks like a like some dragon with a pitchfork and 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 uh, red and with horns that's not the picture that the Bible presents of who Lucifer is. And yet many people around the world picture him like that, right? But that's not what the Bible teaches. Now, Lucifer was actually an angel from heaven, and he was beautiful. He was perfect. He was full of wisdom. Um, it also says here that the workmanship of your timbrels and pipe was prepared for you in the day that you were created. So this is kind of an allu is, is alluding to the fact that he could sing. And he yeah. could probably, he, and he probably led the choir of heaven. You know, he was, he was a very, you know, he had a very powerful voice. He could sing. He was melodious. Everyone enjoyed it. And you can imagine that think, think of your favorite musician here on earth and how captivating that is for you. Can you imagine an angel singing? That must have been a, a sight and a thing to hear. Right. And the other thing that it says here is that he was the anointed cherub. And now we're really diving into the character of who Lucifer really was, right? Because a cherubim is not just any other angel. A cherubim is a special angel. You have all kinds of angels described in the Bible, but a cherubim is a very particular angel, right? So if you go to um, uh, Psalm 99, verse 1, and I don't have the text here, but if you go to your Bible in Psalm 99, verse 1, You'll see that it says it describes cherubims as, um, I'm sorry, it describes God as dwelling between the cherubims. And when you look at the holy, um, at the Ark of the Covenant, and you see those two angels, one on each side, those are the cherubs, right? So that a cherubim is an angel who oversees God's, God's throne, who, who is closest to God, right? And, and that's where Lucifer's place was. He was an angel who was very close to God almost by his throne, overseeing his law, teaching. He was someone that, that we, that other angels looked up to, right? Because he was very close to God. All right. So the next question is, what happened in Lucifer's life that led him to sin? What sin did he commit? Does anyone want to take this one? Ezekiel 28, 17. I get it. All right. Your, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. Ezekiel 28, 17. You have said in your heart, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the most high. Isaiah 14, verses 13 to 14. Yes. So pride, jealousy, and discontent arose in Lucifer's heart. You know, he so soon began the desire to unseat God. And to demand that everyone worship him instead. And, you know, worship is basically at the center of this whole great controversy. You know, Lucifer wanted to be like God. He wanted to be worshipped like God. And if you, you know, even if you think about the, the conflict that we have with each other as human beings, oftentimes uh, most of the conflict is related to uh, people's pride um, wanting others to serve us, not the spirit of service, but the spirit of let me sacrifice everyone at my expense, right? So the sin that he committed is pride. He committed selfishness. 
Amen. And selfishness is at the root of all sins. Amen. Amen. All right. So what happened in heaven as a consequence of Lucifer's sins? Let's see what the Bible says. So I'll read this one, Revelation 12, 7 through 9. You can follow along. It says here, war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Right? Amen. So here we see that there was an invisible conflict, something that we didn't see, but happened in heaven, right? And as a result of this conflict, the devil, or that old serpent called uh, uh, Satan, was cast out. It says here, Lucifer deceived a third of the angels. If you read Revelation 12, 3 uh, and verse 4, it says there that he that he dragged a um, third of the stars of heaven, right? So the, Lucifer deceived a third of the angels and caused a rebellion in heaven. God had no choice but to cast out Lucifer and the other angels because Lucifer's aim was to usurp God's throne, even if it meant murder. After his expulsion from heaven, Lucifer was called Satan, meaning the adversary, and the devil, meaning a slanderer. And the angels who follow Satan were called demons. So they weren't originally the demons that we watch on TV or, or, or that are popularly known. They were actually angels. You know, they were of the same origin as angels. But after the corruption um, they took out. They took on the name demons, devils, and adversary. All right. Are we clear up to this point? Amen. Yes, sir. All right. I'll go ahead and move on then. So where is Satan? So where is Satan's present headquarters? You know, how does he feel about people? Right here it says, "The Lord said to Satan, From where do you come?'" So Satan answered the Lord and said from going to and fro on the earth, from walking back and forth on it. That's Job chapter 2, verse 2. And it also says here, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Revelation 12, 12. And then finally, 1 Peter 5, 8. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Right. So as we can see from these tests, where are Satan's headquarters? Where is he working? He's right. working right here on earth. Right here. right here on earth. Right. Right. Yeah. So when God created, when God created Adam and Eve, um, why did he ask, what did he ask them not to do? What did he say would be the result of disobedience? So now we're, you know, now we understand where Satan or Lucifer came from. We understand what happened in his heart from what the Bible tells us, but now we're going to understand what happened with humanity, right? What happened in the human heart? Amen. Amen. So Genesis chapter 2, verse 17 says, Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Right? Amen. So that's what God asked Adam and Eve. And it was a simple test. Um, just trivia for you. In the end times, the test will be very similar. And even nowadays, right? When, when you think about the seventh, uh, the, the fourth commandment, the fourth commandment says, six days of the week you shall have, but the seventh belongs to me. It's the same test. You know, you can have all these things. But this thing is not for you, right? So God is testing us because he wants to see our allegiance to him. But in this case, Adam and Eve, they committed a mistake. You know, Adam and, Adam and Eve were told not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The penalty for eating of the fruit of the tree would be death. And remember that God created Adam and Eve with his own hands and placed them in a beautiful garden where they could enjoy everything, right? Except just one. It was God's gracious way of giving them a fair choice. By trusting God and not eating of the forbidden tree, 
they would live forever in paradise. By choosing to listen to Satan, they chose to run away from the source of all life, God, and naturally experience death. Now, you will ask me, how come they didn't die right away? That is a very fair question, you know. And the reason why they didn't die right away is because God is merciful. God is merciful, so he immediately made substitution for them. But they did experience death eventually. He, God gave him, in other words, an opportunity to repent. All right, I'll go ahead and move forward. So how does Satan deceive Eve and what lies did he tell her? Genesis 3, 1, 4, and 5. You can read it there. It says, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil, right? So Satan's strategy has always been to put in doubt what God says, right? Amen. God says one thing and the devil says, did he really mean that? Did, no, yeah. Do you really Sorry. think that's what he means, right? Even yeah. when you look yeah. at when you look at Christ, you know, when he was being tempted, is this is the same thing, you know? He's always calling into question God's words. You know, if yeah. you are the son of God, are you the son of God? Are you sure you are? Right? Yeah. He's always putting doubt in our head. So anytime that anybody throws anything at you that's trying to make you question whether or not God's word says what it says you know where that voice is coming from. Amen. You know where that voice is coming from. So the lie that he told her is that she would not die and that her eyes would be open and she will be like God, knowing good and evil, right? So yes, God knows good and evil, but that's not what he wanted for us. He did not want us to know or practice what evil, um, you know, how evil exists. He did not want us to suffer through that. Um, but unfortunately, we disobeyed. Amen. All right. So why was eating a piece of fruit such a bad thing that Adam and Eve were removed from the garden? Right? Why was that such a bad thing? Let's see what the Bible says. So James 4.17 says, To him who knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. 1 John 3, 4 says, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. Amen. Amen. And then Genesis chapter 3, verses 22 and 24 says, Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put his hand and take also the tree of life, and eat and live forever. He drove out man and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life, right? Yeah. So why was eating of the fruit such a bad thing that God had to remove Adam and Eve from the garden? Why did God have to remove them from the garden? Because they disobeyed. Wanna... Yeah, they disobeyed, but what would have happened had they stayed in the garden? Well, they, they would have, have lived. lived forever. They would have lived forever. <laughs> yeah. They would have been tempted to eat of that fruit of the tree of life, right? Okay. Like at this point, their ability to, to, to obey God was even weaker than it was before, right? And yes. In fact, it wasn't weak before. They just chose the wrong thing. But now they would have been tempted to eat of the fruit of the tree of life. And had they eaten from that tree, they would have immortalized sin for us. That would have been a bad thing. You know, I'm not saying that men would have been immortal, but they could have lived for a long time before, so, before someone killed them or before they suffer from disease or anything like that. That would not have been a good thing. And, you know, nowadays, we, you know, it, it would just be complete chaos. It's already bad as is. You can only imagine how terrible it would be if you had criminals living forever. All right. Uh, you know. I have, uh, yes. I think they hate, they didn't uh, know anything about repentance. You know, they showed their real colors when they didn't obey God. 
you know, and God didn't tell him. God told him, do not eat of this tree. If you do, you will die. And so that's correct. You know, so he knew they was going to continue to sin. Because mm -hmm. they didn't know nothing about repentance. They didn't. And, you know, naturally speaking, we ourselves, we don't, we don't really think that what we do is bad until the Holy Spirit or God reveals it to us. And that's the problem with sin. We just don't know. We need God to help us with that. Because to us, everything that we do looks like a good thing. Amen. Eve didn't think, Eve was not thinking that she was going to hurt anybody when she partook of that uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She thought it was a good thing. She thought she was gaining something. But in the end, you know, she, she disregarded the words of God that you will surely die. Yeah. Right. So yeah. she right. didn't, she didn't, her mistake was not um, believing the lie. Her mistake was disbelieving the word of God. So anytime anybody calls into question the word of God, you know where that is coming from. All right. I'm going to go ahead and move forward here. This is question number 10. What does the Bible reveal about Satan's methods to hurt, deceive, discourage, and destroy people? So Satan deceives and persecutes. If you look at Revelation 12, 9, and 13, it says there that he is the, uh, he's that old serpent that deceives, right? And it also says that he persecuted God's church. If you go to Revelation 12, 10 and John 8, 44, you'll find that he falsely accuses, that he murders. Revelation 12, 17 says that he, he makes war against God's people. Amen. Revelation 2, 10 says that he imprisons, you know, he imprisoned the, many of God's servants. Amen. The devil also works miracles and lies. And this one is very... This one is very important because one of the things that happens right now in the world is that most of the people don't believe that a devil exists, right? And God is giving them an opportunity to become aware with the invisible world, with the things that the scripture teaches about the devil and his angels, so that when deception comes, they will not fall for it. But because many people are ignoring what the Bible says, and they say, oh, no, there's no such devil. There's no such thing as hell. There's no such thing as as eternal uh, as a judgment there's no su no such thing as god once satan starts working all these miracles and all these lies in the last in the in, in the end times people will see that and they will not be able to scientifically explain it so mm -hmm. their minds will be primed to accept lying wonders and deceits and they will fall for a lie because they rejected learning what truth is Amen. So it is very important for us to study the scripture so that we are not deceived. Amen. Amen. What else does the devil do? He brings disease. He afflicts. You can think of the example of Job, how he brought a disease on him, right? And there's so many people nowadays that suffer disease. Sometimes God allows it so that he can build our character. Sometimes he allows it so that we can uh, turn away from our sins. Sometimes he allows it so that we can um, learn to depend on him, right? Paul had a, had a disease in his eyes, but God told him that his strength is made perfect in weakness. But it's not God's purpose for God's children to be uh, sick and ill. In fact, he's given us health loss, things that we can do to maintain our bodies in top shape, to maintain our bodies in, in perfect health so we can commune with heaven perfectly. Amen. It says here that the devil also slanders. You know, the word, the word devil actually means um, slanderer. The devil quotes and misquotes the Bible, right? So he told oh, yeah. Christ, you know, he will send his angels uh, he, and, and they will have a charge over thee, right? So he, uh, the devil loves to do this. You know, he will quote to you scripture, but he will quote it completely out of context so that you will do the opposite thing of what God is telling you. Amen. So how important is it for us to sit down and read our Bibles, right? Amen. So that we can tell people what the Bible really says. Amen. Amen. He traps and he devours. He binds and he prompts betrayal. How many of us have suffered as a result of um, uh, 
the devil uh, sowing discord between us, you know, um, as church members. We have to be very prayerful that God will put a spirit of humility in us so that we will not um, fall for his traps. Um, and the devil binds, you know, you can think of, of uh, the disciple Judas, right? Judas was one of the close disciples that walked with Christ for three years. And yet look at what happened to him because he would not let go of sin. It's very important for us to not leave any door open for Satan. Amen. All right. Just a few more. So the devil possesses, he hinders, he appears as an angel of light. He has demons who impersonate pastors, right? Mm -hmm. So just like angels, and you've heard the stories, you know, and I, and I, and I love it because I've, I've read so many mission stories about people who have experience with angels. The devil also has his own uh, characters out there doing their own thing, right? So we need to be watchful of their words. Man. Um, have to Ariel? read your Bible. Yes. I would love to uh, hear 2 Corinthians 11. Uh, sure, why not? Let's let's go to 2 Corinthians 11 so we can actually see exactly what it says here. So I will open that for you one moment. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 13 or 15. I have it if you need it. Please go ahead and read it. Okay, and it says 2 Corinthians uh, 11, 13 to uh, 15, right? For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his min ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Ah, uh, so you see what it says here. Uh so first... Verse 13 says that such are false apostles, deceitful mm. workers, transforming themselves into disciples of Christ. So speaking about people, right? It's speaking about people who are pretending like they're apostles of Christ, but they're not, right? And then it switches here to talk about Satan. So it says that Satan himself is transformed into an, into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, right? Mm. And you can think, and, and this is, you know, you can think that you can think that the Bible here is speaking about humans, but I will link this with Hebrews chapter one, and I'm going to take you there in a second. But it says there here, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. So his ministers are basically his angels, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and I'll, I'll take you to Hebrews chapter one, so you can see from scripture what we mean here. Um, what verse? tell you right now okay so hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 and this is speaking about god's angels right there so he is the devil has his ministers god has his ministers amen can you read that for us yeah amen. are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation yeah, see, so God has his ministers, right? The devil also has his ministers. Mm -hmm. And just like God has his angels who transform themselves into people that we come across in our life, right? Paul says that, you know, be, um, be mindful to entertain strangers. For some of you have entertained angels unawares. The devil also has his ministers, mm -hmm. right? And they transform themselves into, they pretend like they're good people, but they're really not. Amen. And they're all there trying to deceive, so. Yes, I was thinking what you were saying. I know when we first said Lucifer was like, he was a light bearer. Well, he was bearing his yes. own light, bearing the light of Christ. Exactly. That's how That's how he was able to give light. But now all he has is his own light. It's just like saying you got a night light and, 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 a, and a ceiling light. Nah. The ceiling light was Christ. The night light was, is what <laughs> Satan's bearing right now. I like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for that analogy. Yeah, so as you can see, you know, Satan also has his ministers, and we need to be very watchful. Not because someone has the title pastor or minister, um, you can, you know, walk here free. You need to open your Bible. You need Amen. to test what they're saying. And I love how Pastor Johnson says, you know, don't, li don't listen to what this minister says. You go home and you read the Bible. Amen. Right? 
so he also calls fire from heaven and this is revelation 13 13 mm -hmm. uh, making reference to the miracles of the false prophet is going to do you know calling Darian, fire from heaven it i was have, like a, have a question yeah, uh, ronisha has a question go ahead ronisha yeah please yeah it makes me also think of it you know in the bible i think it's in Corin um um first corinthians um first john it says believe not every spirit but try the spirits to see whether they're of God. And then when you were saying how we need to study, 2 Timothy 2.15, we must study to show ourselves approved. Mm. Yeah. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Perfect. Amen. Thank you for that. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. Okay, so how effective are Satan's temptations and strategies? This is almost um, one of those... Uh, self-evident questions right how effective are they very effective <laughs> revelation 12 3 to 9 says that satan convinced one third yeah. of the angels of heaven right that's a lot of angels mm -hmm. he convinced adam and eve um, all but eight people in noah's days can you imagine mm -hmm. and the entire world and only eight people got saved mm -hmm. Almost the entire world follows him instead of Jesus. Many will be forever lost because of his lies. Matthew 7, 14, right? Straight and narrow is the way. Amen. Right? So, the, you know, the, the unofficial question that I will ask is, why are Satan's temptations so effective? Why are his strategies so effective? What do you think? Because of our nature, we're, we, we naturally want to follow him, actually. Well, that's that's with the fallen nature, but he made the angels fall. How how did that happen? <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and also Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve were, were were created perfect. Exactly. They were not fallen. I, I think it has to do. For me, I think it has to do with something that has, um, that I that I question even why, um, uh, Eve wanted to bought into that story of wanting to be like Christ why would you want to be like Christ when you were already made perfect and I feel that that um, goes to the to the to the answer in the sense that it comes with the fact that that we are pride we let our pride get in the way and we don't listen uh, to God we don't we don't want to listen to what um, he has to tell us because, again, um, we want to do it the way that we think that it should be done, as opposed to listening to what he has to tell us. Mm. Or, Arnisha, yes. you were going to say something? Mm -hmm. Yes. It also makes me think because he once was an angel. He once was an angel of light. He once was good. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's also it just it's just hearing that he was an angel of light. He was once good. That's why he's. That's why it's so easy for him to ensnare people because he doesn't come as evil. He comes as pretending to be something that he's not. Well, you can I say something also? Of course. Yes. You know, uh, just like uh, God didn't wipe out the angels in heaven uh, yet, the ones that fell, just like He didn't wipe out um, Adam and Eve. We are in an arena. What happened? That mind did that? Okay. I don't know what happened. I just lost you guys. I'll hear it. We can hear you. Um, we, can hear you. we can hear you. Okay. Um, we're in an arena. Sin was, they didn't know what sin was. And the biggest thing we have a problem of is that when the, the angels in heaven, just like us, when we take our eyes off of Christ, Instead of on on Christ, we go. Our focus goes completely changes. We our focus then becomes looking at ourselves because if we if he he's not in us, we go to look at ourselves. Yeah, they used to have a a, a show or something. I don't know what you called it, Toala Zone or whatever it was. And and uh, you uh, see someone in the mirror. They don't look bad, but then they look in the mirror and they see all this badness. Mm -hmm. when we look in our own mirror we're awful because we're taking our eyes off Christ but when we look in the mirror of his word now we put his, our, our, our word on there then now we can see what God sees us to be maybe not what we are now 
but what he sees us to be. What and he this wants all, us to, to be. me, it's all about taking your eyes off Christ. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, you know, the reason why temptation is so effective is, and I, and I love everyone's comments here because we're right on track. Sin doesn't look like a bad thing to us, mm-hmm. right? Because we're drafted by the, our desires. Um, you can write this down if you want, but James chapter one, verse 14 says, each person is tempted when they're dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Mm-hmm. Then after desire has conceived and it gives birth to sin and sin brings when death. it is full grown, it brings death, right? Yeah. So it is our own desires. Amen. And that's, that's the problem that we have. Satan has derailed us. He has corrupted our desires for us to want things that are not good. And that's why we need the word of God, because we need God to rehabilitate us, to teach us what is good, because we don't really know what good is, right? Every to no. everyone, you know, everyone thinks they're good in their mind. Everyone thinks that what they're doing is good, right? So Satan's temptations are effective because he's appealing to our bad nature. So we need the nature of Christ so that we can start walking heavenward. I'll go ahead and move forward because I don't have much time. Um, did Renisha have another question? And there was Serene too. He raised his hand. No, I was just clapping, applauding for that great point made by Michelle. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. At the end, right. I wanted to go back on that question. Again. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead and move forward. Discuss. Yeah. I'll move forward here then. So question number 12, when and where will the devil receive his punishment and what will that punishment be? David, do you want to read this for me, please? Lenny. Not just when I moved. Okay. Uh, so it will be at the end of this age, the son of man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom, all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast him into the furnace of fire. Matthew 13, 40 to 42. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Revelation 20, 10. All right. And this point is very important because many people think that there's a hell burning right now mm-hmm. and that there's a devil in there with a pitchfork. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. According yeah. to the Bible, when hell starts, the devil's going to be thrown there himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Amen. So that's very important for us to know. There is no, there's no burning hell right now with any devil with a pitchfork. Mm-hmm. And then I'll read also here, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels, right? So here God is condemning the unbelieving and the bad people because they decided to disobey God. But if you notice what the text says, the fire was prepared for the devil and his angels, not for us. So there's no reason why anyone should be lost. There really isn't. God does not want people to be lost. Mm-hmm. And then Ezekiel 28, 18, and 19 says, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth. And the sight mm-hmm. of all who saw you, you shall be no more forever. And it's referring to Lucifer. Amen. Amen. All right, question number 13 says, what finally settles a horrible problem of sin? Will it ever rise up again? No. no. All right. So Romans chapter 14, verse 11 says, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Um, Amen. And then affliction will not rise up a second time. Now, um, I don't have much time, but I wanted to mention here, you can go ahead and read Philippians 2.10 verse 11 and Isaiah 45.23. And the question that I would ask any of you is, um, have you ever burned your hand in fire? Mm, yes. I yeah. have. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've burned myself with a, with, a, with a flat iron. I've burned myself with fire. Mm-hmm. I've put a metal thing into the electric socket and I shocked myself one time when I was little. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you right now, I don't have any desire to do any of those things. <laughs> That's true. Okay? I have no desire. There's nothing in me that says, yeah, let's go ahead and do that um, to do those things. So if you ever wonder, can sin rise again? Believe me, when you go to heaven and God uh, restores you, you're in Christ, 
you will abhor sin. You will not want to do it. You will still be free to make choices and you will choose voluntarily not to sin. Just like you mm-hmm. right now are choosing not to put your hand in the fire. Amen. Okay, All right. And then uh, question 14, it says here, who makes the final complete eradication of sin from the universe a certainty? First John 3, 8, for this purpose, the son was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. I love Amen. that. It says Amen. here, and as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil, right? So it is on account of Christ's cross that we have been set free from the devil. It is on account of Christ's cross that we can overcome the devil. Amen. 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 So how does it really, how does it, how does God really feel about people? He loves you. He loves you. He loves you, right? The Father loves you. Yes. Amen. And then the final question here, do you feel it is good news that God the Father loves you as much as Jesus does? Amen. 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 Yes. It's good news. Brother Brother Ariel. Yes. Eric, can I make a, state, a question, a statement question? Yes. Many, I hear from so many people, well, if God is love, how come he allows everything to happen? That happens. Mm-hmm. People get sick and this, that, and the other. They have a tendency to blame God for it. They don't want to give the credit to where it belongs. They yes. want to say God is the one that, you know, and, and you know, I'm just saying, I would love to say, know some of the scriptures that we could use because I, I'm hearing this a lot. I mean, geez, <laughs> it gets yeah, annoying. Yeah, if, if, I know better. if you give me some time um, after we go through the quiz, I will type them in the chat so that you Thank can you. have them. Thank because you. there are that, that is a very, very deep question. And I asked the same question from Pastor Johnson. I love some of the answers that he gave me. In fact, if he's here, I would, I would appreciate if he types them in the chat. But if he's not, I'll go ahead and uh, type a few of them there but um there is a reason why god allows certain things um to happen um and they're not always pleasant you know no. I, I i tell people i'm an oncology nurse i see a lot of suffering in in you know i've seen a lot of suffering in my, in my mm-hmm. time as a nurse yeah. um but i've also seen people who are sick and they look like they're more blessed than you and me amen and i've seen I've seen those smiles and that peace mm. that only God can give, right? Mm. So just because just because bad things happen, that does not mean that God cannot turn those into blessings. Amen. That's it. So I will give you the answers after. All right, I'll go ahead and move on to the quiz here so we can uh, tag along for the sake of time. So question number one, with whom does sin originate? Lucifer. 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 Right. Question number two. Where was Lucifer when he first sinned? In heaven. In heaven. In heaven. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you. Check the items that once described Lucifer. So what do we think? Created angel? angel. Yes. 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 Perfect in his wisdom? way. Uh, yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Rode a heavenly white horse? No. No. Oh, that's Jesus. Perfect in his ways? Yes. Yep. Keeper of Heaven's Gate? Yes. Uh, trick question. Not really. No, no it, does, I it didn't you said, say that. I thought keep, you said he was, he was the one in charge he, of the... He's a covering no, he cherub. cherub. He's a covering a, cherub. He, yeah. he, covers, he covers God's throne, right? But I think keeper in this sense, in the English language, I think they mean like someone who guards a gate. Gatekeeper. You know? Yeah, like a gatekeeper. Yeah, I don't oh, think. That's okay, I see you. Because right. I thought that's, you that's were saying something like that earlier. Okay. Yes, yes, yeah. I know. Uh, outstanding musician. Yes. 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 Perfect in beauty. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Hovering care of. Yes. yes. All right. Question number four. Mark the items that tell the truth about Lucifer's rebellion. He yes. was cast out of cast heaven. Out of, yes. yes. Did no. he repent and stay in heaven? No, he did. No. He hid inside a palace. No. no. His name became Satan. Yes. yes. He was the first sinner. Yes. 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 
Yes, he was. Um, Jesus, Jesus yeah. saw him cast out. Yes. 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 Right. yes. One third and of the yes. angels fell with yes. him. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 All right. Question number five. What did Lucifer want? To be, be like be Jesus. To be worshipped yes. by God. To be worshipped. Yes. Yes. That is correct. Uh, and <laughs> Question number six. Check the items that are true about the devil. Right? That's is he false. red with horns and hooves? No. 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 His home, no. His home is in hell? No. 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 He loves people? No. 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 He can appear as a heavenly angel? Yes. He cannot work miracles? That's false. Yeah, that is false. That's he is false. a liar and a murderer? Yes. yes. He can call down fire from heaven? Yes. Yes, yes he can. Yes. He did it with mm -hmm. lots yes, of servants. Most people will follow him and be lost. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. that is Unfortunately. All right. Seven. Which of the items below are true about the fall of Adam and Eve? Satan was disguised as an angel. No. Yes. No. no. He, he no. can, but not in this case. But he wasn't no. not at that not yeah. to Eve. Satan called God a liar. Yes. yes. He called into question. Yes. Mm -hmm. In a way, he did. No, yes. Satan gave them apples. No. No. He did no. Not give them apples. <laughs> <laughs> Satan came to Adam first. No. no. <laughs> Satan hoped they would become immortal sinners. Oh, yeah. yeah. He wanted that. He did. In tempting them, Satan missed lies and truth. Mm. Yes. 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 He he did. All the time. Yeah. Hmm. So, what is true about Satan's final punishment? He'll be thrown into the fire? Yes. yes. His angels will escape? No. no. That's no. false. Fire will be in heaven? No. 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 Satan and his angels will admit they were wrong? No. Yes. yes. They will. It'll be a yes, forced confession, will. but they will. <laughs> they will Sinners not. will be cast into the lake of fire? Yes. 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 Satan will confess God's justice? Yes. 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 confession, but yes, he will. Yeah. Why didn't God kill Lucifer when he sinned? The angels might misunderstand. That's true. They might believe that, Some, that God was a tyrant and that he he yeah. didn't didn't really love mm -hmm. and he was only doing right. things out of fear. And that's the way they yeah. would have been doing too. Some might be afraid of God. Yeah, you know, yeah, he yeah. just wipes yeah. out Satan out of existence. <clears throat> you know what? I worship. I'll do whatever you want. Right. right. Lucifer was too strong for God. No. No. no never. The good angels would not let him. No. no. Time was needed to demonstrate Lucifer's plan. There you go. That's why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this one is the this is this is the real Tricky. answer. This one yeah. is so mm -hmm. full of controversy because mm -hmm. we all wish Satan was wiped out, right? But we're looking at it in retrospect. We're looking to a rear view rear, rear mirror. Right. Had we been there, it yeah. would not have been as clear as it is to us now. Time was needed to vindicate God's plan. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. Yeah. All right, one thing that will what one thing will finally vindicate God's government? God will work some miracles. No. no. Every soul in the no. universe will kneel confessing God's love and justice. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's true. Yes. All right. What facts about I'm sorry, what facts below are true about sin? Jesus has made sin's destruction certain. A oh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Sin is breaking God's law. Yes. yes. By definition. Sin separates us from God. Yes. 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 Sin is easy to overcome? No. 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 Satan invented the sin of lying. Yes, yes. he did. Yes. The yes. He did. yes. And yes, once he destroyed, did. sin will not rise up again. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. All right. Question number 12. We're getting there. Which items below are true? Satan attributes his traits to God. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yes. So yes. many people in this world are convinced that God That's is a right. tyrant, mm -hmm. that God is evil, mm -hmm. that God is that that because God allows all this stuff, he can't possibly be God. So yeah, he attributes there you his go. Yeah, to he God. everything that, that God does. loves yeah. us more than our parents do. That is yeah. correct. Yes, yes. 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 The so-called acts of God are acts of Satan. No. 
That's no. false. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So yes, they this are. one is a trick yes. question. And yes. I, and I'll explain Say that again. Why. The so-called acts yeah. of God are... The so-called acts of God are acts of Satan. Yes. 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 We're, yes. we're talking about destruction <laughs> and, and, and pain, right? God so when you think great. about when you think about Lot's... I'm sorry, Lot's... Uh, Job's children, right? They were attacked. Yeah. Uh, the fire came down from heaven. The Sabaeans came and killed and and, and all kinds of bad things happened to Job. There was a wind that came, right? Those were, quote, unquote, acts of God. In fact, people even said to Job. You oh, know, oh, you oh know, so I, well, you have the word. Right? Okay, they blame I God. What you're saying they now. blame God. Yes, they yeah. blame God for those said, acts, right? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. It was Satan. I would have tried to see it was, it was that yeah, it acts was, of God were acts of Satan. It was yeah, Satan yeah, with the permission. Satan, right? With the permission of God. But Sorry it was about the noise. Give me one moment here. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. That's Amen. true about God, Jesus. Life. Yeah. So, and and the reason why this is a trick question is because when you think of there are some times when God does act a work of destruction. Oh yeah. But He yeah. usually rains destruction on the wicked. He does not rain this. Not usually. He always rains destruction on the wicked, not on the righteous. Amen. Not on the righteous. The flood is an example of an act of God. Where God destroyed the wicked. Yes. Fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah is an act of God on the wicked, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, that's right. true. That's just, true. Just want to be very clear with that. All right. So then Jesus' life revealed in God's character. Yes, yes. it is. Yes. God the Father is stern. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. No, he's not. No. <laughs> he's, no a he's, he's a, a loving God. He's a loving God. He's fair. Yes. He's just. He's a loving God. Yes. yes. Right. Most people misunderstand God. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, they do. They definitely God. do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, you know, and a, and a good example of this is your children. You know, sometimes you, you take something from them that you know is bad for them. And they say, but you they don't, they, they, they misinterpret your uh, character. They, they think that what you're doing to them is bad. They don't see the good thing, but you're being mean. Yeah, being so mean is what God they is say. God is letting us have oh, a little taste of me, what it's mommy. like to be like God. <laughs> <laughs> all right and then it says here at number 13 i am pleased to know that father loves me as much as jesus does amen amen, amen. Yes. 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 that's it amen. that's amen. it amen all right. all right thank you very much that was a quick study so um Good sister study. uh michelle i do have to type those tests for you just give me a second but i really just wanted to thank everyone for their participation thank you for being here for for this uh lesson number two on the devil and his origin does anyone have any question is there something that we missed i would just like to have um a, whatever note you have from the first from the first one since i ha couldn't help me sitting here Yes, I will. I will get those to you. Thank you. You mean from the first Bible study? Or? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we recorded that one. We'll hopefully we'll have that ready for you next, uh, maybe in a, in a day or two. Okay. Fine. I'll take these notes too because I, I, my hand is not too good writing sometimes. <laughs> I can't get all the notes down. All righty. So, well, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm going to read one text for you, Ms. Sister Michelle, um, and that is found in Isaiah 57, verse 1. I think out of all the texts that Pastor Johnson uh, sent me, this is the one that, that really answered the question for me, okay? So why does God allow um, bad things to happen to good people, right? So mm -hmm. Isaiah 57, verse 1. says here and I'm reading out of the King James Version the righteous perish and no man laid it to heart and merciful men are taken away not considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come there you go right? Amen. So sometimes, sometimes God allows us to die because he's about to reign judgment and he does not want you to be present there, right? And I don't know about you, but I'm okay with 
laying down my life if God says so. If he's guaranteeing Amen. me heaven, I agree. take me I right agree. now. I agree. Take me right now. I just Amen. want to make it. I just want to make it because I trust God. I trust Amen. that my life is hidden in Christ. Now, do random things happen? Yes, they do happen, right? Um, there, there's children born with disease. There's all kinds of things that have made life on this earth miserable. Mm -hmm. And it's just a reminder that this is not our home. It's right. just a reminder that this is not our that's home. It. That's Sometimes it. God allows bad things to happen to build our character. Oh, Sometimes yeah. God allows bad things to happen to test our faith. Yeah, right? Yeah. Because but isn't how it will you know? That it's... How will you know if you trust God unless that unless that faith is tested, right? And and, and then true. He allows us to go through that experience, and we don't trust Him, and we fail, and then God in the end still pulls us through, and then we we kind of feel guilty, like oh, I should have trusted. Don't worry, you'll have your chance again, and the Amen. same test comes in the future, and you go through it again and, and until and, you until you gain this. I, you I, I remember that. So you gain victory over that that thing because God, because God knows you want to be victorious. He'll bring it back to you and back to you and back. To, well, didn't I just have have that problem? And yes. because God said you didn't get it right that time, but I'm gonna give you another chance to do it and another yeah. chance if it takes if it takes another chance. Yeah. See, I, magicians I, I, magicians go around proofing <laughs> people and doing things. God builds character. As he does. God builds character and building character okay. takes time. He's fashioning us. He's putting us through the fire. He's giving us that shape. When we come out, we'll be beautiful glass. We'll be beautiful yeah, gold, yeah, yeah. transparent like glass when, when he's done with us. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, brother. Um, Aaron. Uh, go ahead. Somebody else say something first. I, I'll wait. Okay. Um, you, you can go ahead, uh, Sister Bass, and then we have two other hands up, Jackie and then Joel. Yes, I, I know I know that in my life there are many people who say, you know, well, look at all the things that have happened to you. But as you said, brother, it builds my character. It makes me a better person. It makes me more like Christ. So I thank God for whatever trial, whatever has happened to be illness or otherwise, because I wouldn't be the person I am today if those things hadn't happened. Amen. Thank you for yeah. that. We had some hands up. I'm sorry, Denise, I didn't hear uh, that. Jackie, and then Joelle, and then Laramie. Yeah, I was um, just going to say that sometimes uh, the, thing, the bad things that happen is, is, uh, may not always be for you also. It could be somebody else, um, and it could be um, as a lesson to uh, see how um, you react, but how you react, helping um, to to either bring that person to know God, or, or either um, allowing that person to see God through you. That's Amen. true. You know, sometimes God gets, sometimes things happen, so God will give you an opportunity to be a blessing to somebody else. Or Amen. sometimes God is testing right. someone else. We should not think that we control so many things, right? We should not think that we're God. We have no, to not. learn to trust God and allow Him to do. The work that he needs to do even our children you know sometimes bad things happen and we're praying for them we're hoping that they don't suffer but in the end god is trying to help them you know yeah. they're getting some help so we have to learn to trust god um who was next um uh, joel and then larry yeah brother uh, my question is so being a christian we encounter you know some of the questions like uh, you know uh, your god is uh, an omnipotent and uh, you say that he is uh, aware of all the things and why he allowed the satan to sin that means uh, is he unaware of the sin what the satan is going to make or what uh, you know uh, what should be our answer in uh, you know such type of your points sure that's that's a very valid and a very fair question right and the question i'm just clarifying here so the question is really you know if God is all powerful, he's all knowing, why did he allow right. Satan to sin, right? Why did he allow evil to, to right. happen? There you go. So there, you go. there are a couple of things that we are dealing with here. Number one, God's sovereignty versus freedom of choice, right? How fair or how just would God be if he forced obedience? And you can think about it in terms of love, right? If you're in a relationship with someone and you force them to love you, is that really love? No. Right. So no. if we have freedom of choice, but God forces us to do the right thing, is that really freedom? 
It isn't. It's fair. And a God, mm -hmm. and a God that is perfect, a, a God that is perfect has to allow for freedom, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Freedom mm -hmm. is, is God being unselfish. Selfishness mm -hmm. is the opposite of what God is. So that's mm -hmm. the first thing. Freedom of choice, God has to allow it, right? Mm -hmm. And number two, um, why did God allow Satan to, to, to choose the wrong thing and to hurt so many people? You know, you have to understand the context of sin from what the Bible pre from what the Bible presents, and the way the Bible presents it is: before the advent of sin, we didn't know what death was. We understood mm -hmm. that there was separation from God, but we didn't really know the consequences of it. Right. So, had God stopped the devil by force, or had He destroyed him, then His claim that God is unfair, His claim that God is a tyrant would have been justified, right? So God had to allow sin to happen, not for his sake. He already knew what evil was. He had to mm -hmm. allow sin to happen so that we would understand, mm -hmm. right? So that's the reason why God allows sin to happen because God needed Satan's character to, to be truly revealed. And in revealing that character and in us understanding what sin is, we would not want to take part in it again. Amen. Right, mm -hmm. we would not want to take part Amen. in it. And you know, you might say, "Well, why couldn't God, you know, just force the issue?" Is it, and it becomes a revolving door, mm -hmm. right? God has to allow freedom. Love has to be free, and at the same time, mm -hmm. God needed to allow Satan's uh, plot to be fully unfolded so that we could all see God's love and His justice. You know, He could have wiped him out, but it wouldn't have been a fair existence. Amen. I, I hope yeah, that that answered answer the question. So, yeah, right, right. So if we are with that, you know, answer, and we have to face one more, uh, you know, question. So they immediately ask, so that means your God is uh, loving this Saturn. Because it is a free choice, right? So freedom of, uh, you know, choice. So what should be our answer? I'm sorry, uh, ask the question again? In that point of view. I think I'm clear, clear with the question. So you said, you know, Saturn, uh, God has given the privilege or he has given us the, uh, you know, freedom of uh, choice, right? We have all the freedom to mm -hmm. choose what is right and wrong. Mm -hmm. yes. So yeah. If that is so, then, uh, you know, what should be uh, the other question the people ask is, uh, if your God is giving you the chance to, or a choice to select uh, good or bad, so why can't he force you to take the good choice? So what should be our answer in that point of view? So if he, he gives us free will. Yeah, if he forces you to take the, if he forces you to do the right choice, then you're not really free. Hmm. Right. And if, and if, he and, gives and us free not, will. And if you're not really free, then God is being selfish. Right? And mm -hmm. selfishness is the opposite of selflessness. You know, selfishness is slavery. Yes. Right? It, and God does not later. want slaves. God it, does not it, want slaves. Course, it's not a choice. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That, we will. Yeah, I understood. Thank it's you. Thank you for doing yeah. that. It, it, it is a very fair question because here's, here's and, and, and I understand where people are coming from because people are trying to solve a problem, right? And we, we like to think like mathematicians, you know, this is a problem. The problem is sin. The problem is evil. Let's just destroy it and we're done, right? But that's not how God operates. See, that's how we think in our sinful mind. That's how we think in our fallen state. Our solution for a, for a bad problem is to just destroy it. That's a sinful mind talking, right? And God's ways are higher than our ways. Um, Amen. So that is a very fair question. I, I, don't, I don't dismiss it lightly. That is a very good question. But in the end, it's all about making sure that we have freedom of choice and that we choose to do the right thing voluntarily, not mm -hmm. as slaves. So thank you, thank brother, you. for that question. Thank That's you. a very, very fair question. And uh, to be you. honest with you, even if you explain it and, and as much as you, there are certain things that you cannot rationalize. There are some things that you just have to experience. And what I would do is I would always pray for these people who ask these questions because they are struggling with it in their mind and God needs to show it to them in their heart as they study the scriptures. And as he puts them in a situation where they can experience it for themselves. 
So thank you yeah. for that, um, brother. Thank you, brother. Where so people here, you know, question? they won't accept all these things. So the problem is they wanted to defend themselves. So they wanted to defend uh, their idolatry and they wanted to, you know, uh, somehow they wanted to uh, diffuse the God. So he, they wanted to decrease the level of our God. So that is the problem here. Of course, Brother Larmi, that, that is so true. And that's why oftentimes um, engaging in philosophical discussions, as much as you can, it, as much as you try to explain Sometimes people are in self-defense mode, right? So what you need to do is pray. You need to pray for God to give you wisdom to answer. And you need to pray for God to work in their hearts so they can see his love. Right? And Thank you, brother. Their, their response to God's love will be to understand his allowing us freedom of choice. Um, but yeah, th thank you for that question. And uh, is a very, very deep, deep question. Thank you for that. Big uh, brother Laramie. Have, the, have the next question. Yeah, um, uh, for me, uh, Brother Joel, you know, I, what I've done is uh, Romans chapter one kind of really clarifies a lot of what you're talking about. And it gives you the reason why they think what they think. Um, well, yes, they do. Yeah. Romans one. Um, I, I had um, the question number 12, and it was, you know, which of the items are true? And one of the items where well, you guys said it wasn't true says God the Father is stern. Now, this is just me, but as far as I'm concerned, he's 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 a little stern. And I want to share this with you because he is not something to be played with. Okay, God is not to be played with. And I think what I really um, want to point out is um, chapter 20, one of the Ten Commandments. Okay, uh, it tells you, thou shalt not bow down thyself, nor, thy, nor serve them, for I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them, them that love me and keep my commandments. So there's, there's an if there, okay? I mean, if you don't like, if you don't care about God, he have something for you. But if you love him, you're going to get that mercy and that forgiveness. I just wanted to share that. Yeah, so I, I, I probably I need think to Stern, clarify. Yeah, yeah I, I probably need to clarify the context in which the word stern is used here. Because, you know, is God a God of discipline? Yes. Is God a God of order? Yes. Is God a God who will deliver justice where justice is due? Yes. Right. But I'm going to read the definition of what stern is. Um, stern means hard, harsh, severe in manner or character, right? So the context in which the word stern is being used here is uh, in the context of someone who's arbitrary and just, um, uh, you know, maliciously harsh for no reason, right? That's the context in which it's being used. Um, I'm going to look at another definition here. Um, so it says here, expressive of severe displeasure, right? So God is not stern just for the sake of being stern. Like that's, that's not his character. Um, that's not how he portrays himself every time, right? You, you've seen some parents that are stern. You know, they're, they're, they're looking at their children in a way as, 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 in, as to inspire fear in them. That is not the, the nature of God. So you can look at the definition of stern and it is in that context that it is being presented. So yeah, we don't want to, um, we don't want to give the impression that God is not, uh, uh, how do I put it? That God is not disciplined or that he will not deliver justice when it's due. You're absolutely right, Brother Laramie. You know, God is very uh, disciplined. You know, he's a God of order. He's not a God of chaos. Right. So, you know, how can you put order unless you have certain things in place? You look when you look at the plans, when you look at creation, there is order. Right. Yes. So, yeah, God is a God of order, but he's not a God of just um, un, undue harshness. And I Amen. think that's thank the you, context brother. in which is being presented. Thank, thank so thank you. you for that. Um, thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Bernicia, yes. you had a you had a question. 
Yeah, I wanted to share um, two scriptures with Joel when he was talking about how he was asking about um, God gives us a choice. It made me think of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. It says, I call heaven and earth to, to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thou seed may live. And then Joshua, um, Joshua chapter... 24 verse 15 it says and if it seem evil unto you serve the lord choose you this day whom you will serve mm. whether Thank you. yes i just want to share those two ronisha would you he, would he you tells mind, us to choose life. ronisha would you mind typing that in the chat box if you can please i'd really appreciate that yes amen thank you so much amen thank you thank you sister thank you so much all right, so I think I've overextended my stay. Uh, we could stay here talking forever, but I think in, it needs to be <laughs> fair to everyone. I'm going to go ahead and close those with prayer. I, I really appreciate everyone's participation. I, I really feel like I just have friends from all over the world. Um, and, you know, my prayer is that God will help us to have the wisdom to continue studying his word, to know how to share it with other people, and to really portray his character in the right light. Um, you know, when there's a contest of God, I know God will shine through and we just need to learn to pray and ask him to uh, deliver us. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and pray Ariel? father in heaven, Lord. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt, but there are a couple of prayer requests in the chat. Um, Joel has a prayer request there. And also, uh, big Joe is in the hospital mm. the chat there. So. Are you able okay. to see it? I don't see Joel. Oh, yes, I see it. Okay, perfect. Okay, okay, thank you. All right, so I'll go ahead and, and pray here. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we know that you are God of justice. We know that you are God of love. And we know that justice and love meet together at the cross. And we just want to ask that in the name of Jesus, you will forgive us for our transgressions and that you will set us on the right path. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling with the truth and they're sincerely seeking for you, we ask that you reveal yourself to them. Heavenly Father, I also want to lift up in prayer Big Joe, who's in the hospital. Um, I, You know, Lord, where he's at in his relationship with you spiritually. You know, Lord, where he's at in his health. And we just want to ask that you will put your healing hand over him. Please, Heavenly Father. We also want to lift up um, Sister Pravalika, who's in critical condition. She's in a coma. Mm. The tumors in her brain. Mm. She's in the ICU. And um, Heavenly Father, you know that you know money is an issue for us, but it is not an issue for you. And I just want to please ask that you will <clears throat> deliver, Heavenly Father, deliver in a way that we know that it is your intervention. We know, God, that, that oftentimes you allow us to go through certain experiences, but none of us likes to feel pain. So please, God, deliver. Please, Heavenly Father, put your healing hand. And may your will be done in Pravalika's life. Lord, we pray for her family who's going through this very stressful time. We pray that you will satisfy what they need, not only financially, but spiritually and emotionally. It's a very trying time and we can, you know, words cannot describe, feelings cannot, we, we just, we just can't even imagine what they're going through, Lord. Everyone's experience is so unique, but we know that you're a God of miracle. We know that you're a God of wonder. We know that you're a God who's a creator, who's able to do all things. So please, Heavenly Father, put your healing hand. Um, we want to pray, Lord, for every other petition that's out there, that you will grant us what we need that you will grant us peace of heart. Heavenly Father, you know what else we need. Give that to us. All these things we ask for according to your will, because we trust you. And in Jesus' name, amen.